Okay, good day everyone. It's been a while since I made a video, just all the COVID stuff, you know, not a lot's been happening at the shop. Um, so this is uh, another section of this um, onesie wire busy building. It's a Mazda 1.5. So we're setting the valve clearances on this now. Actually, already, I'm already halfway through this, so I figured I'd just make a video recording um, before I finish up to show you guys what's going on. Okay, so for starters, first of all, if the cams were installed, we would have measured the, uh, used a feeler gauge. Grab that over here. So you basically use a feeler gauge. Now obviously I've already removed the camshafts, but you would use a feeler gauge to sort of in one of these blades here and you would sort of measure in between the camshafts and the valves how they all come together. Now basically let me just guys just show you the section from grab this camshaft here. So let's say the intake cam was in here. Okay, so there's now the intake cam. And we have now installed this component uh, on here. So we would basically then use our feeler gauge with the valves at the top position, like so. Because you've got to check. Sometimes you you see how the valves kind of slanted away. They're not they're not flat like this. They're kind of slanted like like that. So your your um, cams need to point in that direction. So in this case, we would look around about. Let's look at these lobes over here. So that's around about there would it be and then we would use a feeler gauge to sort of measure in between. Now you would do this with everything fully installed but since I'm already halfway through this I'm not going to do that now. It's going gonna, it's gonna to make the video quite long. Okay, so then you would measure each individual one and you would graph it out and then you would take measurements of these, uh, of these sh uh, shims. Uh, there's a specific word for those uh, for these, I forgot what they're called, but these bucket chims, that's what I call them. So now I've already done these, so I'm going to go to the uh, go to the workshop now and tell you guys, show you guys how I measure that. Okay, so here we have graphed out. Uh, okay, that was actually wrong there. Actually the gaps were wrong. I used the wrong feeler gauge. So I actually want to show you guys here because uh, as you see, these ones show zero, and these ones show a much bigger figure. Now that's actually a less than symbol. It looks like an L, but I write in hieroglyphics. Only archaeologists can read what I write. So it's actually less than 0 0.125, and this is all in millimeters. Just so we just so we know. Okay. So we had the in exhaust cam here, and we had the intake cam here. So basically, as we were facing the engine, we'd work towards that. It just makes it easier and more ergonomical. Then we use the feeler gauge, and I measured these values between the camshaft and the bucket shim clearances. Now this one there. So it's right there. Then I wrote my tolerances here. So intake cam must be between 0.27. I know that looks like a three, but just bear with me. And then 0.33. So I'm actually aiming for 0.3 because I want to be in between those ranges. But any number between 0.27 and 0.33 is fine. So from 0.33, 32, 31, 30, 29, 28, and 27. That's your ranges that you want to be in. And the intake and exhaust cam is the same. And we are doing this with a cold engine. Right, very important with a cold engine because you've got heat expansion. Okay, back to what we're doing here. So you see here I've got some values here. Now what is what are those values? So what I'm going to basically going to do, I'm going to measure the value that I have, and then I'm going to measure the value of the shim that I have. Then I'm going to deduct the this value from the value that I need. The proper one and I will, it will give me a number and then I know how much it must reduce or increase uh, I'll show you guys when I do when I do that so basically we have removed the cup now keep in mind you don't want to hold this in your hand a lot because the heat actually from your hand actually makes this expand so this is the bucket gym now normally you see inside there you would have get that thing to focus you'll have like a little shimmel plate there. now this is one solid unit but normally you'd have like a little shim or like a little plate and then that is the one that you'd exchange but in this case this whole thing is one unit so this whole thing needs to get replaced now first of all as you can see there's a lot of rubbish and gunk inside there and we can't do it because it's going to throw off our measurements here so i'm just going to clean that uh, quickly okay so now we have cleared the inside now notice i only cleaned let me use this as an indicator i only cleaned the inner section where I'm going to be measuring. Now you can clean that other area as well, which is probably not a bad idea. 
but since this is my, going to be my own personal vehicle, I know that only that section is the important one, and we're going to use that to measure. Now, to measure this, you can't just use like a vernier or something or a ruler or anything. It's just not going to work. You're going to need a micrometer. Now, our micrometer setup here is very basic. So we got the micrometer setup here. Now, notice it's in a vise, just very loosely. It's not too hard. I mean, this is a delicate measuring equipment. You don't want to over tighten things. But the reason I'm doing this is you always want to hold the micrometer there because the heat from your hand actually goes into the device and that affects your measurement. So first of all, what we got to do, we first got to check that if the micrometer is zeroed now this makes it so much easier if the camera will focus you guys will be able to see right there now we're using the thimble there to turn it in and right about somewhere there now I have already zeroed it but you see it's already gone out a little bit so then we would use our little uh, I'm gonna put that now over here we use our little tool and we would basically Put that in that little slot there. See, this one needs to go and get the camera to focus with the bright lights. It needs to go down. Okay, well, actually, I just sort of uh, use the thumb a little bit more, and then it would have clicked in. I don't know if you guys can see there. And very important, you've got to watch from the side because if you look from the top or bottom, you see it's going to be a little bit off. So, you want to get that thing exactly centered so it needs to go a little bit up. Let me just adjust that quickly so you guys don't get vertigo from the camera shape. Okay, so there you guys can see the line has now been perfectly zeroed around about there. All right, so now what I'm going to do, I'm going to turn this thing out. Now, I want to slot this cup in there, but it's too big to get in there, so we're going to have to like tip it in there. So we're just going to, I wish this camera will just focus. So we're just going to turn that back a bit. I'm going to just lock this one in place. Um, needs to go a little bit more, and that should do it. And then we're going to hold it in place there, as we're going to turn the thimble in here. I'm just turning it a little bit closer, and then what we're going to do, we're going to hold this one in there. This might be a little bit tricky to do, but I'll use that and then get it on the center. Okay, so we have nine solders, and we're using the thimble here. So now the clicking sound is there. We want to check that it's nice and center on the inside there, and we can see. Around about there, that it's uh, nice and centered, it's not off center, it's not a little bit skew, it's perfectly aligned with the shot. Now we're going to take our reading here. Sorry, you guys, for the sh shaking camera. So that's about 0 0.15, that's about the closest there from where I'm standing is 0 0.15. You see there, so you see the difference the angle makes if you watch from the bottom versus the side. I'm just going to just flash off so you guys can see what's going on here. And uh, yeah, the lighting is just not, there. We go. Now you can see. So just by looking at the angle of it, it'll it'll fake your measurements. So if you're standing here, you'd be reading 0 0.14. Well, down here, you'd be reading 0 0.15. So you've got to make sure that it's exactly your line of sight. Wow, this focus on this thing is so bad. Um, line of sight is important. That's what you're gonna work with. Now we've measured 0 0.1, but now I'm going to put the flash back on. Notice that here we've got a little dimension there. You see there's actually, oh, I wish this stupid thing will focus. So notice there by the zero we've actually got one, two, three. So this is actually 3.15. 3.15 millimeters. So, uh, one six actually, that's not, uh, we'll go with one five. Now, notice that that's 3.15 but I only wrote 0 0.15. Well, this seems very difficult to focus. Okay, but we're going to write here 0 0.15. Now, you might see something interesting here. Like, if our tolerance needs to be 0 0.33, but the shim is only 0 0.15 thick, it means that we're actually going to go below this measurement. So I'm using this as an indication of sort of a, a gauge of how far down is acceptable but normally you would put the whole dimension in but we're going to just be looking at the 0 0.15 for this demonstration okay so that's basically what one would do with these and then you would take so let's use a uh, cylinder one for example here valve one uh, you have you currently have a 0 0.23 you want a 0 0.3 so we need to minus those two from each other and we get 0 0.08 I think 
Yeah, so we need 0 0.08 to make up that distance. 7, man, what am I talking about? 7, right. So to get from 0 0.23 to, we said our goal here is 0 0.3, that's what we want the clearances to be. So to get from what we have to where we want to be, we also need to add a 0 0.7. So what's going to happen is that the 0 0.15, actually now, with the 0 0.7 removed, is going to be 0 0.08, I think, 16, 15, yeah, 0 0.08. So we need to get a shim, bucket shim, that's this guy over here, let me just remove that. Get this thing out of here. So we need one of these that's going to be a thickness of 0 0.08 instead of the 0 0.15 that we measured for this one. Now you see there's different sizes. Okay, so when you get something like 0 0.15, 0 0.15, 0 0.15, and you see like one or two of them are a little different, clean them, clean the areas again, um, and remeasure them. Make sure that you have no contaminants on your side here. Let me get a better camera. This thing does not focus well. No contaminants on that. Look, that's like a mirror finish. You can see the pencil tip there reflecting, and on this side as well. Stupid camera will focus. I don't want to focus now, but clean area. Look, you see, it's like a mirror finish there. It's like very clean, so you don't want any contaminants in between because it will throw off your measurements. And then your surface area on the inside. Double check that. Make sure that's clean. Nothing affected your measurements. And also check the top side, so there are no variations. And that's basically how how you would go to work to measure your thicknesses. Now, in normal uh, vehicles, this shim on the inside is actually removable, and it'll have a number on that, and that'll be the thickness of the shim, or maybe a weight or something as well. But you are looking for the thickness, and then you would just exchange that with a set of shims um, that would best suit your application. So normally these shims always come in a even number, but sometimes, you know, you do get like a 1.5 and a 1.7 and a 1.8 run about there. Okay, anyway, guys, this video is getting long. I don't want to make it too long. Um, and then, obviously, after this, you reinstall everything, have a look at it again. And then that's how you go to work to set your valve clearances on a double overhead cam engine.